Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and today we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. Now, when I first saw the commercial for this phone and when it was first released by Samsung, uh, showing off the metal build and how it can stand up on its own, on its side, and all these other special things, my first reaction, and I even left a comment on the video, was meh. I mean, it looks like very similar to other Samsung phones, and it's, it might even look like a mini Galaxy Note 4 or a slightly improved Galaxy S5, but I said meh because it's so similar to a lot of other Samsung phones. But now it's officially coming to the United States, which means we're gonna have to take a closer look at this because this is gonna be showing up in stores right next to the Galaxy Note 4 and the Galaxy S5. So let's take a closer look at what makes the Samsung Galaxy Alpha different, which means this is going to be a shorter video because the list of things that makes the Alpha different from phones like the Galaxy S5 and Note 4 is pretty small. But the big focus here is obviously the material choice and the feel in the hand. That's the whole point of this phone, the whole reason it exists. And the main way they've done that is by adding a metal band all the way around the frame of the phone where they used plastic before. So now whenever you hold the phone, you're holding metal. And that makes a really big difference in the way it feels. And that band is chamfered everywhere. It's chamfered all the way around. The power button is chamfered. The volume buttons are separated and chamfered. And they're very clicky. The build of this guy is really, really improved now. And it actually reminds me of the iPhone 5S in a lot of ways. Everything is chamfered. But the thing is, it feels very premium from the front and from the sides, but you flip it over to the back and suddenly it's the same old Samsung again. It's plasticky, soft touch, removable back, just like the older phones. And don't get me wrong, removable is great. You get access to the removable battery. There's no additional storage, but you know, I'm not saying it doesn't feel sturdy when it's attached to the back of the phone, but the material itself that you're constantly touching on the back does not feel nearly as premium as the metal that surrounds it. It kind of seems confused. Does it like, does it really want to go all the way to being a premium feel or only go part of the way? And it's actually kind of the same story with the specs of this guy. Actually, this was the first Samsung Galaxy Alpha into the United States, completely thanks to 28 Mobile. Check out my Instagram date for proof. And it had some pretty beastly specs. So this is a Korean model, it has LTE A, it's an octa-core processor, it has two gigs of RAM, all your usual sensors, gyroscope, etc. But then it drops to a 12 megapixel camera on the back instead of that new and improved 16 megapixel one in its brothers. And a 720p pentile display that's not really as good as other 4.7 inch display phones. This display is, you know, it's OLED, and yes, it's very vibrant and saturated, and it does get pretty bright, so it's kind of pleasing, but when you look up close, it definitely breaks down it's not a high-end panel. And it again leaves you with this incomplete feeling about whether it's supposed to feel fully premium or just partially premium. But that's not gonna stop a lot of people. This device is still great, still feels great, still looks great. Performance is also really smooth when you combine, of course, that high-end chipset, high-end graphics, two gigs of RAM, and a 720p display. And overall, the software experience is very similar to the Galaxy S5 you've probably already seen. Uh, it has a very similar feature set as well. I really like the size of the phone. Very good fit in the hand with a 4.7 inch display since it's a bit smaller than the iPhone 6 thanks to its thinner bezels. So it's clearly not a full on flagship phone. It has an 1860 milliamp hour battery and a battery life similar to the Moto X. Uh, and it's not a flagship with the slightly bumped down 12 megapixel camera. Even though megapixels don't mean everything, it's a older sensor but yet it has all these other nice specs and this really, really big emphasis on the quality of the build, this premium feel in the hand. Uh, and you know, it'll compete with top of the line phones. It's almost like a hybrid between the high end super premium stuff and the Samsung feel of last year, almost like a bridge between these two. And honestly, this phone gets me more excited about the Galaxy Note 4 than it does about itself. So at the end of the day, the Alpha is definitely an improved phone, no doubt. It's significantly better feeling in the hand, I would say, than the Galaxy S5. And I think it's pr probably one of my favorite phones just to hold in general. Something about that 4.7 inch screen size also appeals to me a lot. But at the end of the day, my reaction is still meh, because like I said, it's so similar to these other phones. And I happen to like big phones, so I'm gonna get my hands on the Galaxy Note 4 very soon anyway and probably do a video on that, ranting a little more about how I love the metal so much. But either way, that's been my review of the Samsung Galaxy Alpha. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.